Hey hey people, Raz here. Today, after many trials and tribulations, I can finally show you how to build the British Spring Gun Carrier. When I started this project, I was inspired by some excellent LEGO sets. Hilariously, the same day I started building mine, Brick Tanks actually finished his. So thank you for pioneering this Brick Tanks. I was able to use your design to help me come up with some of the ideas for my own mock. All in all, I think this mock turned out pretty well. There's some things I'll probably fix on mine, like widening the front and fixing some of the detailing on the back, but for now, I think this mock is good enough to make a video on. So, without further ado, let's just jump into it. The first thing you'll need to do is build the base. It's really important to pay attention to this because the base is what controls the track tension, which is going to control how well your mock is going to roll. For the bottommost wheels, I used one four stud peg and two two stud pegs on each side. This gives it the same appearance as the real Bren Gun Carrier. Next, I used flat pieces to build up two layers and put two more four stud pegs on each side. This will give the drive gear and idler wheel perfect track tension. Next, we'll turn it around and look at the back wheel. This is where we will mount the exhaust once we're in the detailing phase. Lastly, I built up one more layer for the return roller. This is the layer where you'll need to start making a cavity for the front crew compartment. Again, we'll use flat studs to fill out the interior one more level, and then we'll start building to the top. To start out, we'll use a flat 4x6 block on the rear. Next, we'll use a 10 long and 8 long block to build to the back to make the mock sturdier. Also, we'll use a 2x4 flat piece to make the front mud guards. Once we're done with this, we'll fill out the front arbor and put in two slant blocks in the front. Make sure one of them has a peg hole. We'll use this later in the detailing phase. Here, we'll use a 4x6 flat piece and two 2x1 flat pieces. Next, we'll use a 4x1, a 4x6, and a 4x4 flat piece. Here, we'll use a 2x10, a 1x6, a 2x1 smooth piece, and then a 1x2 tall slant piece in the rear. Ignore the fact I used two 3x1 pieces here. I was just out of bricks. This part is important. Remember to use two 4x1 flat peg pieces and a 4x1 smooth piece on the top. Lastly, we'll put a standard 4x1 brick to fill out the base. Now you're ready to build the front. Here we'll use flat angled pieces to make up the front armor of the vehicle. On this part, I chose to use two peg curb pieces and a six peg slant piece with a peg hole to create the effect of a headlight. Now that the front is complete, you can start flushing out the back. Here we'll add a standard 2x4 brick to fill up the center. We're going to leave some space for our driver and gunner in the front. Now we're finally ready to start on the back. First, we'll start with a standard 1x8 block. Next, we'll use a 1x8 flat piece. Then, we'll do a single flat block, a hooked block, a 1x3 block, another hooked block, and then a 1x2 block. Now, we'll start to finish the top. Here, we'll use a 1x3 block with two pegs a 1x2 block, and another 1x3 flat block. Now we can start to finish the sides. Realistically, you can do this however you want, but here's what I did. First, I used two 1x5 flat pieces. Then I used two of our smooth angled pieces to make up the side armor. On the other side, I used a 4x1 flat piece. Then I moved to the middle because Raz is a messy builder. Here I used a 3x1 flat piece, a 2x1 flat piece, and a single flat. Next I used a 5x1 flat piece and a 2x1 flat piece. Then I went to the front compartment and added two of our smooth angled pieces. Also, while I'm on the front, I'll add the last piece of our front armor. Finally, I'll get back on track and use a 1x6 flat piece in the middle. Then on the other side, I use a 1x5 flat piece and finish it out with two of our smooth angled pieces. Next, I'll add two more 1x8 flat pieces to finish up the middle, and I'll top it off with two 1x3 smooth pieces and a single 1x2 smooth piece. I mainly did this because mock building is expensive, and Mr. Raz doesn't have the money to buy all those fancy 1x8 smooth pieces. Now I finally had the main exterior done, and I can get on to my favorite part, the roll test. 
Ooh, now that's a good roll. Since I'm done with the overall hull, I can now start detailing the model. The first detail I'll add is the back engine grill. Here I just used a simple 8 peg block and put a grill piece, a 2 peg flat piece, and a 2 peg dimple piece for the machine gun. Up next, we're gonna finally put some tracks on this bad boy. And, because I've been good, and I deserve it, let's give it another roll test. Ah, uh, hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Anyways, now that that's done, I'm on to my favorite part of mock building, the detailing phase. First, I'll give this puppy a good spin and then stick it on the front of our universal carrier. After that, we'll put a gas can on the left and a headlight on the right. And now, for the most important part. What you'll want to do is hold the vehicle off camera while you attach your Bren gun. Then they can't steal your secrets. Anyways, now that the front's done, we can move on to the back. First, we'll use a 2x4 flat piece and attach our stowage pin. Next, we'll detail the exhaust. Here we'll use a 2x1 grate and a 4x1 flat piece. Lastly, we'll attach the exhaust to the 4x1 piece. Now we can start attaching our tools. Here I chose a crowbar and a shovel. Next, I attached an antenna and a 2x1 riveted piece to simulate another stowage pin. And of course, let me just give it one more roll test, because 2020's been pretty tough and I think we all deserve a good roll right now. Next, I'll build the machine gun out by using a conical single stud block, a single black round piece, and a single black flat piece. Once the stand is done, you can slide your Vickers machine gun on it. Now, you're officially done with the mock. All that's left is to add some soldiers and some minor detailing pieces. As it stands, I think this is a pretty decent mock. It captures the overall shape and looks the part. So the next question you'll probably have is, was it worth it? Well, to figure that out, we'll need to figure out which sets went to making it. As a disclaimer, I'll say I'm not always 100% sure which sets made every part of my mock, but I can tell you where I got a lot of the specialty pieces at. To start out, we'll look at the Strum Panzer II. This is where I got a lot of the flat side pieces and also the vertical standing pieces for the front and side armor. Next, we'll move on to the Panzer IV. This is where I got the exhaust pipe, the return roller, and the slant piece with the mounting block for the headlight. Next, we'll move on to the Panzer II. This is where you get the specialty dimple piece that holds the gear to the front of the Bring Gun Carrier. As far as I can tell, this is the only Kobe set that has this piece. Now we'll move to the Tiger 131. This is where I got the ammo stowage crate that's on the back and the two engine grills. Up next, we'll move on to the German half track. This is where I got the rolling gears, the tank track itself, a lot of the slant pieces, the gray gas can, the gray stowage bin, and the antenna. Up next is the British soldiers. These were acquired through a variety of different Kobe sets. Usually they were additional characters that were just on, included on the side. That's also where I got the bring gun for this vehicle. Lastly, we'll look to the Kobe Brick Mix. This is where I got a lot of the specialty detailing pieces, like the uh, headlight, the Vickers machine gun, the mounting for the machine gun, the vest that I used to decorate the side of the vehicle, and the extra high slant block. As far as I can tell, I think Kobe has these all randomized, so I don't think there's any guarantee that you'll get these same blocks from that Brick Mix. At the end of the day, I consider this a wonderful mock, and think it's worth building if you can find the parts. Normally, this is where I would end the video. But wait! There's more. The British Bring Gun Carrier, or Universal Carrier, was used throughout the war by pretty much every side. It was essentially the British solution to the half-track. Built on a modified Carton Lloyd tankette design, it was adapted for a multitude of roles during the war. Also, it had an incredibly weird steering system in which the entire track was designed to be bent rather than using a neutral turn like most tanks did. This caused it to be loved by its drivers because it drove just like a car and was really maneuverable compared to most other tracked vehicles. It was mainly produced in Britain, the US, and Canada. As part of Lynn lease it would be sent all around the world. Its main function was a troop carrier, but its usefulness ended up going far and above that. It would be used as a reconnaissance vehicle, an anti-aircraft vehicle, and even had a radioed commander variant. In the beginning of the war, they mounted a boys' anti-tank rifle to the top and eventually transitioned it to a Vickers machine gun. Later variants had a mortar and even a flamethrower attachment. It would see most of its action in its designated troop carrier role. However, it also served with the Artillery Corps, hauling a QF 6-pounder anti-tank gun. Also, it would be used by the Royal Engineers, the Red Cross, the Royal Air Force, and that was just on the British side. It was upgunned with the 50 cal and used by the Americans in the Pacific. 
The Russians bought it through Lend-Lease and mounted a huge-ass cannon to it. The Germans captured it at Dunkirk and gave it to the Vichy French to help build up the Atlantic Wall. However, they kept a few for themselves and converted them to anti-aircraft roles. The Italians captured it in the western desert and used it as a troop transport because their tanks were notoriously unreliable. And finally, the Japanese captured it in Malay and used it to transport troops through the rough mountain trails of Indochina. After World War II, it would serve in Korea, the Suez Crisis, the Indonesian Civil War, the Costa Rican Civil War, the Nigerian Civil War, and the Arab-Israeli War. It would literally serve all around the world, and its last official use would see it sporting a recoilless rifle in Argentina. In the end, 113,000 were produced, and it would continue to be used until the early 1970s. All in all, this was a smashing success, and would become one of the most iconic vehicles of World War II. Anyways, that's the end of this video. I hope this video has inspired you to make a bring gun carrier for yourself. I'm constantly tinkering with these mocks and looking for ways to make my own better. So before I conclude this video, I'd love to see your mock. If you build one, I would encourage you to post your build over on my subreddit. There, I'll also be happy to answer any questions you have on my mock. As usual, thank you for watching. You're all truly wonderful. Bye for now.